Graham Norton, Stephen Fry, Ian McKellen. Some of the UK's most beloved national treasures are gay men. But what if I was to tell you that two of them are gay meerkats? Hello, I'm Rowan Ellis and welcome to my magnum opus. This is a love story, 10 years in the making. Yes, you heard me correctly. 2009 was the first time we were introduced to these two icons, Alexander and Sergei. For the people who are not from the UK, let me give a tiny bit of background. These two are the protagonists in a series of adverts by a UK company called Compare the Market, which used to just compare car insurance and now compares a whole ton of stuff. The premise being that they ran a website called Compare the Meerkat, but their website was in jeopardy. You see, a load of humans were going there mistakenly thinking that it was a website Compare the Market. So they took to our TV screens to explain the difference. Now here's the thing, their relationship has never been officially and explicitly confirmed by Compare the Market. So it is my task, nay, my life's mission, to prove it to you today. Let's begin. So I've compiled my research into a document. I have pictures, video files, text, and I'm gonna share it with you today. I have a full timeline of their relationship with <laughs> copious evidence. So. First of all, let's start at the beginning. When did they first meet? Well, Alexander, a meerkat of high renown, whose family business compared to the meerkat had been booming, wanted to get into the online space, but he didn't have the technical know-how to do that. He comes across Sergei. He is a Russian meerkat astronaut who had landed on the moon ahead of the American meerkats at NASA. It is later proven after he was rewarded with a beautiful medal that he faked the whole thing in his garage. Um, but still, Alexander, impressed with his ingenuity and technical know-how to be able to pull something like that off, invited him to join the company. Now, the keen advert watchers amongst you may say, Rowan, what are you talking about? That wasn't in any of the adverts. Where did you even get these from? Did you do them yourself? First of all, thank you for assuming that I had this kind of artistic ability. And second of all, I am no mere advert watcher. No, I am beyond that now. I have been consumed with the eternal question, are these meerkats gay? And so I paid £4.99 to buy the ebook of Alexander's autobiography, A Simple's Life. Simples! Interesting fact. Um, this is actually sort of hinted at at the adverts the keen advert watchers amongst you will have spotted. For example, um, Sergei writes on a blackboard some extremely rockety science things during one advert, um, and also has very cute space-themed pajamas. So the adverts themselves start a few years later. They've been living and working together for some time now, although not at this point in a romantic relationship, but they are comfortable enough that Alexander will take baths at the same time as Sergei is in the room. Now, Alexander doesn't seem awkward or embarrassed. He's confident, brash, and more than a little selfish. But Sergei, on the other hand, well, he can't look at Alexander while he's in the bath. Even when he's totally covered by bubbles, Sergei feels nervous. Does Alexander not care if he looks? Maybe because he wants him to look? Or because he's so uninterested in Sergei, it doesn't even cross Alexander's mind to be worried. And why is Sergei even thinking about this? Why does he care what Alexander thinks? He totally just, he doesn't care what Alexander- Sergei throws himself into his work. The issues with the business are mounting as compare the market customers continue to crash their sight. In the end, the stress and obsession with his work is too much. Even Alexander is noticed. Sergei thinks Alexander is going to fire him for being too old. He starts to cry, but he isn't sure why. Maybe losing the job, but maybe losing a friend. Or even confirmation that Alexander really does just think of him as too old to be any good. But instead, Alexander buys him a brand new computer. Feeling flustered by the show of emotion from Sergei, Alexander jokes that it's just so he can keep him working twice as hard. But after all of this stress, Sergei decides that it's time to move on to another job that will afford him more dignity. The circus. But rather than forget about him, like Sergei is sure Alexander will, Alexander finds him and calls out in the middle of a show asking Sergei to, and I quote, come home. Despite himself, Sergei can't refuse what he really wants and they return home together. 
This marks a turning point in their friendship. They spend more social time together, playing Twister, joining a band, even meeting Sergei's totally normal and absolutely straight meerkat hero, Gary Barlow. It's going well. Even if nothing happens between them, they're still friends after all. But then, one stormy night, a baby arrives on the doorstep and everything goes to hell. This is baby Oleg. After only a few minutes hesitation, they welcome him into their home. They start co-parenting together, they feed him, they clothe him, they decorate a whole nursery and they even tuck him in at night together as a family. Little things that baby Oleg does, little silly things Alexander will say, ha ha, he takes after you, Sergei. And at one point, Alexander refers to baby Oleg as part of the family and Sergei, his heart stops for a second. Does that mean he? Sergei is part of the Orla family too? Soon they take their first family holiday together to Africa to show baby Oleg his heritage. They stay together in a small tent with only one visible bed and it is torture for Sergei. Everything that Sergei wants but can't quite bring himself to take in case it upsets the balance that they've created. Then, in a devastating turn of events, baby Oleg decides that he wants to stay in Africa to be with mere pups his own age. As they walk away for the final time, he calls out, Goodbye, Papa Alexander. Goodbye, Auntie Sergei. It's too much for him. The tears start to fall as they drive away. In an attempt to escape the hole in their lives left by baby Oleg, they move from their mansion in Makova to their mansion in Los Angeles to start a, a movie part of their business in order to make films to, again, persuade people to stop using their website. The budding family they developed over the past few months was shattered. Even as their business thrived, allowed them to rub shoulders with the Hollywood elite, Sergei could feel his dreams of a family with Alex slipping away. It was always worse that Alex seemed to be respecting him more in business, taking him to business meetings, laughing at his jokes. He decides that he needs to get over his crush once and for all. He decides he needs to start dating for the first time in 30 years. In September, Alexander notes how Sergei seems to be wearing a new aftershave and taking mysterious phone calls from someone he claims is a wrong number. Sergei has given up on Alexander ever returning his affections. So at the start of October, he comes down the stairs of their LA mansion with a bunch of roses and awkwardly tells Alexander he's going to the movies on a date without him. The door opens to reveal the date is none other than Nicole Kidman. The first date seems to go well because Sergei and Nicole Kidman start to date and eventually Sergei starts referring to her as his girlfriend. And at the start, Alexander doesn't really seem to mind. In fact, he tweets this, Sergei not stop smiling and say he have butterflies in his tummy. Ha <laughs> ha, it's probably indigestion. He jokes, hashtag, Sergei hot date. But then suddenly, almost overnight, something changes. Alexander, when he tweets, isn't supportive at all. So something has happened between the start of November and the 12th of November. What is it? His Twitter gave me all the clues that I needed. On the 9th of November, 2015, they went dancing together. They even photographed together. Now, I don't know what happened on that dance floor. I can only speculate. Did they kiss? Did they almost kiss? Just look into each other's eyes and find a common and unspoken understanding about what those long years living and working, raising a child and moving across the world together really meant to them both? But I'm, who knows? But what I do know is that Alex realised his feelings for Sergei that night and nothing, nothing would ever be the same again. We can see in this next tweet that something has shifted. Alexander, only days afterwards, and with no tweets in between, Sergei is out on hot date. I don't mind being alone, by myself, without him. I don't miss him at all. He is a strong, independent meerkat, but look how sad he is. The lady, as they say, doth protest 
too much. This all comes to a head in December of 2015, just a few weeks later, when Alexander crashes a date between Sergei and Nicole Kidman to desperately ask for Sergei to choose between them. Over the next few weeks, come and I'll show you here, um, Alexander begins tweeting. Starts off a bit passive aggressive. I am assuming you not come home for dinner tonight. He hasn't said where he's gonna be. The next one, I don't usually write a letter to Santa, but this year I really want something for Christmas. My cinema buddy bag. He's been driven to desperate lengths. Then a series of tweets in response to tweets of Sergei's, which have since been deleted. My advice is choose successful, beautiful person who appreciates you for who you really are. That's right, hashtag choose Alexander. Sergey, have you lost your marbles? I am only one who accepts you as you are. Hashtag choose Alexander. Could this be accept for who you are, appreciate for who you are? A coded reference to Sergey's bisexuality. Finally, on New Year's Day of 2016, an advert is aired asking who will he, Sergey, choose? Stunning, talented Hollywood A-lister, Nicole Kidman, or his old friend, Alexander. And choose Sergei does. He chooses Alexander. Finally, our boys are together. They go on their first date to the cinema, of course. After all this time, they finally both know how they feel about each other. But their story is only just beginning. So for the next year, all of the adverts are just them going on dates to the cinema. That is all it is. It's just a series of their dates. Um, that's what's happening with the adverts. Online, however, on Twitter, we come to what I like to refer to as the year of shitposting, in which they just tweet like a gay couple who is taking the mickey out of each other. Um, some classic examples being, uh, on April Fool's Day, ladies and gentlemen, terrible news, Sergei is quit, I wish him all the best in his new IT department, followed hours later by April Fool's, mwahahaha, Sergei isn't going anywhere, he will never leave me. We also have a kind of a funny one from Valentine's up there, you know, Alexander complaining he didn't get a card from Sergei, um, Alexander does a lot of ribbing on, uh, Sergei's fashion choices, um, you know, he dug up a swimsuit from a few years ago for the family getaway. Still referring to it as a family getaway when they go away together because they are family to each other. <laughs> I think some things should stay buried. Ha ha ha. And one of my personal favourites, I would make a snowman, but I already have Sergei. He wiped round and does nothing. This, to me, so clearly a queer couple ribbing the shit out of each other on Twitter. So in the summer of 2016, they described to go on what Alexander describes as a family road trip. And then when Sergei says, but we don't have a family, he says, oh, that's okay, because I have enlisted the help of Macaulay Culkin to round out that dynamic. They co-parent the former child star like they did with baby Oleg. We also see that they still have a picture of baby Oleg in their camper van, even though they didn't get the camper van itself until a year after they left him in Africa. We see how all of this is adding together. The dates that they're going on, the references to themselves as a family, the shit posting, like only queer couples can do. But we also have some really interesting references. Come over here. So here on this board, we have the references which are to movies. All of these movies are romantic movies. We have When Harry Met Sally. We have Casablanca. We have uh, Titanic as well. All of these things in reference to them and their relationship. So this road trip lasts until Christmas, when they finally return home to their LA mansion because Sergei tells Alexander he's feeling a little homesick. While there, they continue to go on dates, of course, including one on a private yacht, complete with the same type of roses that Sergei took on his dates with Nicole, where Alexander says, this is the life, Sergei, just you and me and, before choking and having to be rescued by Sergei while impersonating the iconic bow of the ship moment from Titanic. They are so used to being there for each other that in another movie reference, when Sergei takes just a day off and forgets to tell Alexander about it, Alexander mopes around the house, replaying a scene from Bridget Jones where he plays I'm all by myself on repeat and eats his weight 
and pints of ice cream. They eventually return home to their LA mansion in 2018, where, on a memorable occasion, Alexander teases Sergei by talking about all of the Hollywood A-list men that he could take as his cinema date. He talks about Bruce Willis, Denzel Washington, Brad Pitt, and then laughs saying, I'm only pulling your tail, Sergei, come on. As if almost a reference to that time before when Sergei had had to choose between a Hollywood A-lister and Alexander, and had of course cho chosen Alexander, Alexander promising the same back in a beautiful moment. So everything remained pretty much the same until October of this year, 2019. It had been three years since that fateful decision on New Year's of 2016 where he chose Alexander and they began their relationship. But in this advert, in October of 2019, we open not on our two protagonists, but on the village where we left baby Oleg all those years ago. He's playing with Ayana, his friend, when suddenly bulldozers crash into the screen, destroying their home and forcing them to flee. Baby Oleg grabs only one thing in the millisecond they have to escape, a postcard from Alexander and Sergei that says, we'll always be here for you with a picture of them both in San Francisco on the front. The two mere pups travel to America to find their dads, but after days of searching and no luck, they finally give up. Oleg drops the postcard from the Golden Gate Bridge, only for it to fall right into the path of Alexander and Sergei. Papa, he cries, Auntie Sergei! They run into each other's arms. And then, under the tagline of bring your family together, we see them going for a meal, going to the cinema and taking a beautiful family portrait. And so this is what all of this has been leading to. All of my research, we've gone across this entire timeline spanning 10 years. We've seen them as colleagues, as friends. We've seen them grow and develop into something more. We have seen them raising child together. Finally, the final chapter so far in the story of these two British icons. They're there together in love with two baby meerkats that they're going to be looking after as a family in the queerest goddamn city in America, San Francisco. And now, at the end of all of this, I speak directly to you, Compare the Market. I solved your clues. I trawled through their tweets. I watched every advert, and I bought your £4.99 autobiography. You can admit it now. I've solved the puzzle that you laid down for us. My quest is complete. Sergei and Alexander are in love. And I realise now what he was trying to tell us. Because at the end of all of this, I've realised it was and always has been. Simples.